Hi dear viewers, welcome to Government of Andhra Pradesh Commission Rate of College Education LMS Portal. My name is Dr. Al Polinaidu, lecturer in Geology from Government Degree College Men Sri Kakulam. Today I am going to discuss about locomotion in Proto-Jova. It is from 1st BSc, 1st semester. The topic is divided into Objectives, Introduction, Types of Locomotory Organelles in Protojovans, Types of Locomotory Methods in uh, Protojovans and finally Summary. The objectives of this lecture are after attending this class, a student can able to explain what is locomotion. He or she can know the types of locomotive organelles that are there in uh, Protojovans and they can know the various types of locomotive methods in protojovans let me explain you about uh, introduction part you know the term meaning uh, locomotion directional movement that enables someone or something to move from one location to another in latin the term uh, uh, loco means place motion means to move so it helps to move an animal from one place to another for the purpose of fence searching for food and shelter not only protozoans all living creatures generally they move for these three important needs in this diagram you can able to see the unicellular organisms it belongs to protozoa. All these are unicellular, single cellular cells, but they can perform all the metabolic activities. The generally, movement means streaming of uh, protoplasm in the unicellular organisms like amoeba is simple form of movement. And it includes again uh, some other cell organs like uh, cilia, flagella, tentacles. All they can show movements. And with the help of these organelles, protozoans, so some voluntary movements, these voluntary movements are called locomotion. See here in the first diagram, there is a paramecium which has cilia as its locomotor organelles, and uh, in addition to locomotion, it also helps food intake and in amoeba it is a, a temporary cytoplasmic projections which looks like a false foot so it is also a pseudopod and in iglina in the third diagram you can able to distinguish a, a, a long uh, thread like structure whip like structure called flagellum it helps in locomotion in addition to food collection let me explain about uh, the types of locomotor organelles that are there in protozoa as i said earlier there are four different types of uh, locomotor organelles in protozoa pseudopodia flagella cilia and myoniums let me explain you about one by one Protozoans are generally classified based on their locomotor organelles. Mostly there are four uh, subphylum. There are Sarcodina with uh, Pseudopodia as their locomotor organelles. Example Amoeba, Ciliophora. These Ciliophorans, example Paramecium, they have Cilia as their locomotor organelles. And the Sarcomastigophora in which uh, some species may have uh, pseudopodia in addition to flagella some may have only flagella as their locomotor organelle for example euglena 
sporozoa generally these protozoans are devoid of locomotor organelles because they lead a parasitic mode of life for example plasmodium first locomotor organelle uh, that we are going to discuss is pseudopodia it is a false feet it is a temporary outgrowth formed by the streaming of flow of a protoplasm uh, formed at, uh, at any part of the body found in protozoans uh, with very thin pellicle uh, it may formed by ectoplasm and uh, endoplasm and there are uh, four different types of pseudopodia uh, like uh, as you can see in the diagram lobopodia philopodia exopodia and reticulopodia lobopodia it's a um, blunt and short finger like uh, projection uh, abiba uh, it's a lobe like pseudopodia with a broad and round end it's composed of both ectoplasm as well as endoplasm lobopodia moved by pressure flow mechanism uh, you can uh, observe this type of lobopodia uh, in Iba uh, and Arcella philopodia this is a fine a long thread like pseudopodia and uh, these are more or less filamentous and branched uh, for example nubifa uh, usually is a tampering from a base to point active as you can see in the diagram philopodia are composed of ectoplasm only there is no involvement of endoplasm here uh, you, you can see in uh, radios uh, also this type reticulopodia the reticulopodia are thin and long filamentous the filaments are branched and interlocked uh, it looks like a network and this network helps as a trap for food and this reticulopodia display two way flow of cytoplasm you can see in the diagram it is a elephidium it shows reticulopodia as its locomotor organelles and in, it, in addition to locomotion it also helps in food collection exopodia is a, another type of pseudopodia it is a long stiff thread made up of ectoplasm uh, needle like structures they contain a central axis a rod like center structure it is made up of endoplasm and it is covered by granular and adhesive cytoplasm this exopodia displays a two way flow of uh, cytoplasm exopodia are characteristics of uh, heliozoans uh, generally these are uh, circular in shape uh, mostly it uh, helps in uh, capturing a food you can see see the diagram of uh, acnophrys it shows exopodia as its locomotor organelles then come to another uh, locomotor organelle in protozoa that is uh, uh, flagella it is a microscopic hay like structure it exhibits a coiled motion uh, flagella usually do not fuse uh, the word flagella means whip they are fairly long and are uh, few in number they are usually found at one end of the cell helps to propel a cell through the liquid you can see the diagram of euglena here it shows uh, anterior uh, flagella some special flagella are used in a few organisms as sensory organs that can sense changes in a pH and temperature too uh, free living forms have one or two flagella and some but uh, parasitic forms may have up to eight uh, in euglena you can see the anterior flagella and trypanosoma you can see it posterior end of the uh, body this trypanosoma has flagella a typical flagellum shows uh, 9 plus 2 arrangement and consists of in a central axony made up of two longitudinal fibrils here is a diagram uh, you can see uh, these uh, two longitudinal fibrils arises from a, a basal granule the bepropos or a, it's also known as kinetosome it, these are joined to the nucleus by a rhizoplast each peripheral piece uh, bears a double row of short arms uh, made of dynein protein uh, peripheral paired fiber is connected to inner ring through a radial spoke at the tip are uh, on the main axis flexible lateral processes are there they are named as mastogonemes of flimmers based on the arrangement of the flimmers or mastogonemes uh, different types of flagella you can see 
uh, stichonematic type of flagella, the mastogonemes are present on uh, only one side of the flagella. Generally, stichonematic type is observed in euglena and astasia. Pantonematic uh, type of flagella, uh, two or more rows of lateral appendages arranged on both sides. Uh, this type of flagella is observed in Pantonema and Monas, as you can see in the diagram. Uh, acronematic uh, lateral appendages are absent and axonema ends as a terminal naked axial filament that is there in uh, Chlamydomonas and Volvax. And uh, and the two types of flagella are pentanematic and enematic. In pentanematic, two or more rows of lateral appendages and the axoneme ends in terminal naked axial filament. Uh, it is there in uh, your cellus. And enematic type of flagella is simple and without any lateral appendages and a terminal naked filament is there. Uh, you can observe this type of enematic uh, flagella in Chylomonas and Cryptomonas. It is there in the diagram. And the third type of locomotor organelle in protozoa is cilia. These are highly uh, vibratile small ectoplasmic processes. It has a similar structures and functions as that of a flagella. But cilium is shorter, devoid of mastogonemes and movement is uh, quite different. That means uh, the me method of working uh, cilia and uh, flagella are different. Cilia and uh, characteristics of ciliata. Uh, they also exhibit 9 plus 2 structure like flagella. There are uh, 9 pied peripheral fibers enclosed within a delicate sheath. You can observe uh, this type of arrangement in the diagram. Sometimes uh, the cilia may fuse to form uh, some structures like cirrhae. Uh, you can observe in stylanchia and uh, membranal structures in peristome of verticella. Some undulating membranes also you can observe in verticella that is there in the diagram. Cilia has also observed on the outer body surface of larva of uh, certain uh, molluscans, annelids, nematines and thus helping in locomotion. And the fourth uh, 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 locomotor organelle of uh, protozoa is myonemes. These are uh, pellicular contractor structures found in pellicle or uh, ectoplasm. They may form a network or surrounded by canal, uh, primary organelles for metaboly in paramecium and organelles for locomotion in uh, monocystis and plasmodium. They are found in uh, ciliates, flagellates and in sometimes uh, sporozoans also and they may be in the form of ridges and grooves for example this type of uh, 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 myonemes are observed in euglena and sometimes a contractile myofibril type of myonemes are there in majority of ciliates and sometimes they look like a microtubule as in the case of trypanosoma. Now we will uh, going to discuss about uh, modes of locomotion. There are four different types of locomotion based on the locomotor organelle again. Uh, if it is by pseudopodia, it is called amoeboid movement or pseudopodial movement. And if it is by flagella, it is flagellary movement. If it is by cilia, it is ciliary movement. And if it is by myonemes, it is called metabolic movement or metabole or gliding movement. Now, uh, we will discuss uh, each and every mode of locomotion one by one. And uh, pseudopodial movement. Uh, which is also known as amoeboid movement. Uh, the process is visible under the light microscope uh, as a movement of granule uh, within an organism. It is the result of changes within the colloidal protoplasm from, uh, 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 from uh, fluid plasma salt to uh, more solid plasma gel and vice versa. This was well explained by sol gel theory which is also known as change of viscosity theory. It was proposed by Hyman in 1917 and supported by Pantin and Mass in 1925. You can observe the uh, diagrammatic representation here, the, how the uh, pseudopodia protrude out uh, uh, in, at the leading edge and uh, how it addition uh, to the surface. Now, finally, it's how it shows the movement. You can observe in the diagram the pseudopodia is fixed on the support uh, by some adhesive secretions and the protoplasm of the body gradually flows into it. The ectoplasm is dissolved and the endoplasm flows. 
new pseudopodia appears and by the repetition of the process the animal slowly creeps forward the speed of amoeba mostly uh, 2 microns to 3 microns per second and there are so many other theories uh, that explain about the amoeboid movement uh, uh, with the help of pseudopodia and the contraction theory that was proposed by Sludge and uh, walking theory, Dillinger, rolling movement theory by Jennings, uh, surface tension theory by Battle, addition theory by Jennings and the fountain zone theory by Allen, folding and unfolding theory by Goldacre and Lodge, hydraulic pressure theory by uh, Ronaldi and John, uh, but a uh, well explained uh, uh, theory that is a uh, Solgel uh, theory or a change in viscosity theory that was proposed by Hyman and supported by Pantin and Mast. And another type of mode of locomotion is flagellar movement. This flagellar movement was suggested and uh, movement of uh, flagella well explained by uh, Wickerman and Cox in uh, 1967. Then uh, Bacelli and Gray explained the forward and the rotational movement of the uh, flagellar organisms. Uh, Lordness and uh, Explain the, that involves a series of spiral waves pass successively from the base to tip and uh, flagellum director backwards during locomotion. The speed of loco, uh, the speed of movement is determined by the length of the flagellum and by the size of and distance between and uh, waves in, that it generates. Swimming speed uh, achieved by flagella are relatively low when compared to cilia. Uh, it's uh, 15 microns to 30 microns per second in euglena. Flagellar movement. Uh, flagellum pushes the fluid medium at right angles to the surface of its attachment. By its bending movement, the bending movement of flagellum is uh, made by the uh, sliding of microtubules past each other with the help of dynamics. The dynamics show a complex cycle of movement uh, with the energy provided by ATP. These dynamics attach to the outer microtubule of an adjacent uh, doublet and pull the neighboring doublet. As a result, the doublet slide past each other in opposite direction. The arms release and attach a little further on the adjacent doublet and again pull the neighboring doublet. The doublets of the uh, flagellum are physically held in place by the radial spokes and thus the doublet can't slide past much and uh, their sliding is limited by the radial spokes. Instead, the doublets can curve causing a bend in the flagellum and this bending has an important role in the flagellar movement. Flagellum shows the following movements uh, that are uh, uh, classified into three types. Uh, uh, paddle stroke, undulation motion, simple conical motion. This paddle stroke motion is also known as sideways lash motion. Undulation movement. Undulation uh, from the base to the tip causes pushing force and pushes the organism backwards. Similarly, undulation from the tip to the base causes pulling force and causes the organism to pull forward. Also, when the flagellum ends to one side and shows wave-like movement from base to tip, the organism moves in laterally in opposite direction. Finally, when the undulation is spiral, it causes rotation of the organism in the opposite direction and this is called gyration. Sideways lash movement. It is a, a type of movement shown by flagella. It is a paddle like uh, a beat. Uh, uh, during effective stroke, the uh, flagellum becomes uh, rigid and starts bending against the water. This beating in water at right angles to the longitudinal axis of the body causes the organism to move forward. Recovery stroke means uh, during recovery stroke the flagellum becomes uh, comparatively soft and will be less resistant to the water. This helps the flagellum move backwards and then to the original position. You can see in the diagram how the flagellar action shows during a power stroke and a return stroke or recovery stroke. And there is a third type of flagellar movement uh, which is known as simple conical gyration movement. In this kind of movement the flagellum turns like a screw. This propelling action pulls the organism forward through the water with a spiral rotation around the axis of movement and gyration on its own. Ciliary movement. This is the third method of uh, locomotion protozoans. Uh, now, the cilia acts as a small oars and uh, can beat forwards or backwards, enabling the animal to swim anteriorly or posteriorly. 
The cilium performs work against the viscous force of the water during the both uh, effective and recovery strokes. To be effective, each cilium must beat in a coordinated manner with its neighboring cilia. A synchronized beat is passed along a ciliary row by means of a hydrodynamic linkage between the cilia. The speed in paramecium with the help of cilia is nearly 1500 microns per second. Cilia shows two types of coordinated rhythms, a synchronous rhythm and a metachronous rhythm. In synchronous rhythm, where the cilia beats simultaneously in a transverse row, in meta chronous rhythm wherein cilia beat uh, one after another in a longitudinal row the metachronal waves pass from anterior to posterior the beating of the cilia can be reversed to move backwards when a paramecium encounters any undesirable object in the path the ciliary movement is coordinated by infraciliary system through neuromotor center called uh, as a, a motorium present near the set of pharynx in the ciliates like paramecium the infraciliary system together with the motorium form a neuromotor system which helps in coordination of the beating of cilia. The ciliary movement is uh, the fastest locomotion in protozoans. Just like the flagellum, the cilia also shows uh, back and forth movements during the locomotion. Uh, as you can see in the diagram, the back and forth movements of the cilia are also called effective and recovery strokes respectively. Cilia moves just like a pendulum or a paddle. The cilia moves the water parallel to the surface of its attachment like that of a paddle stroke movement. The movement of water is uh, perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of cilia. Effective stroke means uh, during effective stroke the cilia bends and beats against the water thus bringing the body forward and sending the water backwards. In recovery stroke, during recovery stroke what happens? The cilia comes back to the original position by its backward movement without any resistance. And the Fourth type of locomotor method in protozoa is metabolic movement, which is also known as gliding movement or gregarian movement. It is a temporary changes of body, its body shape, and uh, this is a typical uh, in uh, certain flagellates, uh, um, mostly euglena, and some sporozoans at certain stages of their life cycles. Uh, the zigzag movement in the protozoans brought about by the contraction and relaxation of myonemes present below the pellicle in the side and the ectoplasm uh, is called as a gliding movement. The movement by gliding is comparatively small. Myonemes are the contractile fibrils uh, which are similar to the myofibrils. This kind of gliding movement is shown by flagellates, sporozoans, nidospora and some ciliates. Till now we have discussed about uh, locomotion and movement and the types of locomotor organelles in protozoans and uh, the structure of flagella and cilia in brief and the type of locomotor methods uh, in, that are there in the protozoans like amoeboid movement, flagellary movement, ciliary movement and metabolic movement in protozoans. Thank you very much.